Hi, welcome back. I'm Darren with Northstead Landscaping and in this video we're going to do a one-year review of our RT65 Max and we're also going to do a cold start on our 2017 ASV RT60 and we're going to compare the two and I'm going to tell you which of the two machines that I like the best or prefer. And we'll go over some of the things that I like and don't like with the two machines. So yes, I just got back recovering from the cold. Yes, the cold that uh, is going around. Uh, so if I got it, then uh, that must mean everybody's getting it because I don't live near anybody. So I just also want to mention that it's also been one year since we started the channel or really started putting some content on our channel. I really appreciate you guys subscribing. Now, I know everybody prefers the videos on the equipment rather than the landscaping that we do. So if you're not aware of that, check out my other videos using the, this equipment behind us here in those videos and putting them to work, doing uh, interlock driveways and, and all sorts of other stuff. So check out my other videos and don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so the one thing about the RT65, we've now got 130 hours on it. And that may not be a lot of hours for some people, but it's all we really need. Because again, we only work approximately seven, eight months of the year. So comment down below, which skid steer is your favorite machine either in this video or you obviously may have a favorite or have a machine of your own. Put that in the comments down below. And also how many hours you guys typically use on your machine, I'd like to know. Okay, so let's get into this. This is the RT65, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use some movie magic here and I'm gonna snap my fingers. Okay, so just want to have a peek in here. I want to show you guys what's in the engine compartment of the RT65 Max. Now, as you can see, we've got a uh, computer here, control unit, whatever you want to call it. We've got a pre-fuel filter, fuel filter, hydraulic filter, oil filter, air filter, some other type of filter, probably hydraulic. There's another hydraulic filter tucked in behind there. So what I'm trying to get at is there's a lot of maintenance involved with this machine when it comes time. So it's yet to be determined whether or not this will be a lot more maintenance or a lot more trouble going as it gets older. But I mean, the good thing is, is that everything's accessible and you can get at it. But I do know that the um, service kits run between $250 to $300. And uh, that's not too bad, really. But uh, once we do our first servicing, we're only about halfway there. So once we do that, we'll do a video on that. And uh, comment down below what you guys think. Is this a good idea uh, going for a more um, sophisticated system? Or do you think that the RT60, which again, we're gonna do a cold start video with that next. And you tell me down below what you would prefer, the old or the new. So we're up here, we're going to check on the uh, 2017 RT60, started up, hasn't been run in a few weeks anyways. Get this door open here and I'll show you the difference. Hey. Uh. 
Whew. Now, our T60, you can see we're minus uh, six, but we just came out of a minus 20. That's ice. We're in minus six wind. We're just, like I said yesterday, it was, it was minus 20. Got that locked. So these ones, uh, compared to the uh, 2008, have a lock on them, which is nice. Keeps the uh, raccoons out of the uh, engine cow. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna open this up and of course, but if you look at this machine, I got, let's just look at this. It's so simple. It's so simple. You got your air filter, you got your fuel filter, you've got your oil filter. Uh, that's it. There's a element in here for your hydraulic filter. Now, the more you use it, the more maintenance that you're gonna require. So the less you use it, the, le the longer you can let your maintenance go. If you look at the body, the tracks which are the same width as the rt65 is the same footprint but you can see the cab and the and the and the and the body of the machines much further in so if you're going to hit something you're hitting these tracks first which are going to do a lot of damage unless you're into something like a dense of aluminum shed or something the other thing is the rt60 has this big uh, counterweight now if you hit this you aren't doing any damage to that you're going to scuff the paint and i've done that and when you hit something with this, like a tree or a fire hydrant, you're not doing any damage to either the fire hydrant or your machine. You're gonna scuff the paint, you just get a little bit of black paint and you touch it up and you're good to go. So again, the, the profile of this machine allows you to hit things and not do any damage to your machine. Now, I'll flash pictures up of the RT65 and you can see the RT65 is uh, really exposed in these areas here. Uh, and if you hit anything on the RT65, you're gonna damage, you're gonna, you're gonna create hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in damage, depending on how hard you just hit something. So that's a scary point of the RT65 that bugs me. Now what I wanna do is I wanna run this machine, get, get it up to temperature and get the battery up. I was trying to figure out how many hours we put on this since, uh, April 2020 now currently we're at 1587 hours so so I'm putting about 150 hours on the uh, RT60 it's that cold out so we'll put the glow plugs on I'll give her a little throttle and she should fire right up all right the one thing that the one thing that you have to check on these the fan belt is the one thing I maintain the most in this machine I change it more than the oil well I change it probably as much as I do the oil because these belts they wear out and uh, it's that belt right there okay so what I'm trying to get at is the RT 65 is a great machine but I don't know if it's better than the RT 60 I know the RT60 inside and out. So the question begs, why do I want to learn everything all over again? Well, I'm sure there are some advantages and there are. For example, the cab, as much as you can see out of it, it's a lot more roomier for bigger operators. Some of the advantages to the RT65 are in the interior. It's airtight, meaning you're not going to get as much dust in assuming you have the door on it's a much more airtight system and less chance of uh, you know dust and things coming in and contaminating the driver the um, air conditioning and the heating is much better although i had nothing wrong to say about the heating in the rt60 i never bought one of the rt60s with uh, air conditioning because it was more of an afterthought and they had a big condenser on the roof and that uh, also uh, wouldn't allow me to bring it into a garage this size, which is what I needed to do. And um, so although they did a lot of improvements on the uh, cab, I give them kudos for that. I question 
why they made things really complicated as far as, I mean, because this machine doesn't really feel much more powerful than the RT60. 